Hello, hello. Oh, gotta get that snap. Hello, hello. And welcome back to another video. I am with you here today in Midtown on the Veteran Sherman OG. And look at this guy ripping on blades, no brakes. That's an OG guy right there. No way I'll be able to keep up with him, but ooh, he's killing. Ripping. My man, brother. I'd love to uh, chat with him. I should have mic'd him up and had a chat. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so you're all probably wondering what's going on with these with uh, with Best Buy. I picked up a controller. What's in the bag? What's in the bag? It's a control. It's an Xbox controller and a battery uh, clipping rechargeable battery for it. Uh, yep, it's about that season. It's about that time of the year to play some Xbox with a friend. Totally a missed opportunity. I'll be on a better lookout next time. You know, you get better each time with recognizing opportunities, especially when you miss, like, a really great one. Um, hey, who knows, though? We're both going through traffic. Could be a bit of a safety issue, too. Um, but let me explain what I mean. I've been meaning to write and chat with people more when I'm on the wheel, and uh, by that... I mean, um, I've been carrying around an extra microphone in my pocket just in case I run into a fellow EUC rider or scooter rider or dynamic rollerblader like that guy, but it didn't occur to me at that moment. He was even talkative. He said, what's up, right away. He seemed uh, kind of drawn by the wheel. And I love to rollerblade, so as a rollerblader, I know that anyone who rollerblades is a prime candidate, potentially, especially a young man for uh, EUC riding and getting into this life. Uh, you can tell I'm way more armored and geared up than he is, but that makes sense. That's about logical because of the higher speeds. Um, although, I feel like wearing at least a helmet, maybe some wrist guards, would be prudent, even as a rollerblader going at average speeds. Anyway, I am on Madison Avenue now, headed uptown, and I am trying my best not to scream into the microphone, because it's right next to my face, so there's really no reason to scream. Guess what else, guys? Mr. Eboarder, huge shout out for when you told me about the mic cover, the little feathery, uh, furry, cattail looking mic covers that helped this whole channel with all this crisp, clear audio when I was still trying to figure out how to get it done. Seems like that was ages ago, but uh, really wasn't even that long ago. Not that many videos ago where all you could hear is wind noise during these videos. Um, but now you can hear me very clearly. Anyway, so back to my point uh, with the shout out to Mr. Eboarder. Guess what? I bought another Dead Cat microphone cover for my helmet Bluetooth stick. It's in my helmet. Matter of fact, I might be able to show it to you right there can you guys see it so turns out I wasn't being heard I'm gonna push that back up there oh the new toll thingies right above my head yeah 60th Street that's the one so um, yeah when I was taking calls in my helmet people were like bro are you serious what are you saying all I hear is static and wind noise and I was like well I don't know uh, and then I realized, oh my God, it's a microphone. I've been down this road before. And I got one of those furry covers. Actually, I already had a pack when you buy them to make you buy like five or something. So I still had some left over from the last time. Even though I've gone through plenty of mics since then I, and I've been running through those little thingies, those little furry black cat cover thingies. I'm sure they're not made out of real cats, guys. So settle down, settle down. Don't come after me, PETA. Oh. Okay, um, that guy put some pep on his step, 
I know, I know, I normally shouldn't do that, and I, I don't normally do that, but I just figured he was going to be slow off the pickup, just like most cars are, and that I had plenty of time. But clearly he was in a hurry. Clearly he had some juice under that tiny hood. And who am I to speak? I have plenty of juice under this tiny hood, so, you know. Yes, this wheel is uh, small, but it packs a punch. Acceleration-wise, how you doing? Yep. So, um, yeah. Is that it? Yes, it is. Uh, I know, I know, I'm sorry, don't yell at me in the comments, I know. It was definitely my fault. I will exercise better judgment moving forward. You know I will. I'm learning every day to be better and better, and to do a better job, and to avoid getting hurt, and to potentially ruin someone's day, because it's not like they want to be running around running people over, that's for sure. There's no argument there. I know I'd be pissed off if some guy jumped in front of my car and I ended up accidentally hitting him and then I have to wait for the police and wonder who's at fault and will I get severely reprimanded for all of this? What are the consequences going to be? So yes, I'm very thankful I'm okay and I've learned my lesson. I'll be more careful moving forward. And I've made many other mistakes and you guys have called me out on them too and I learned from those as well. So, uh, you know. I'm willing to learn. I'm willing to be coached. To all my fellow riders out there, I hope watching some of these moments actually helps you be a better rider out there as well. There's nothing like learning from someone else's mistakes. It can uh, even save your life potentially one day, right? Big shout out to Mr. EUC Live, who puts his life on the line out there every day. Check out his Instagram. And I know I, I have learned a lot from him. He has taken many a falls for the team and teach, taught us and he's been teaching us and he advocates for safety and tells us all the time, tells me all the time uh, to be careful out there and has shown me footage of what cars are capable of and what they can do and it's not always clear cut someone else's fault. Sometimes it's just a bad mix of, whoa, 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 of transactions, bruh, bruh. I don't think that was my fault, but uh, yeah, those hard lean, hard turners over there, those guys need to chill out. But then again, you know, they never expect someone on this thin wheel thingy to come squeeze it in. So it's uh, again, you can't just yell at people and fault them just because they almost ran you over. It doesn't always work that way all the time. Sometimes you have to look at it from both sides of the coin. If you really want to be fair and analytical and keep yourself safe on this thing. Because remember, the goal is not to get hurt and fault someone. The goal is to not get hurt. And when you do that, sometimes you have to recede a little bit into conservative territory. Where, yes, you're giving up some of your rights or some of your mm, fun factor points. You got to give up a little something sometimes just for the sake of lowering the probability of the potential of getting hurt. That's that's really the important aim here. I'm gonna wait for these pedestrians. They have the right of way. I'll allow them to pass through. Yep. And I'm gonna wait this time, see? Told you, very coachable. Okay, this is the last car and then there's plenty of room. And I've given right away and made sure it was safe and now I can cross through, which is the bike law. The bike law says, Give the right of way to those who have the light, and then you may pass when it is safe. It, with the exception of those who do deliveries and work as messengers, professional bikers, so to speak, are subject to additional laws, like the mandatory wearing of a helmet and the mandatory uh, fixation of lights, blinking lights on the front and back of the bike, at nighttime. So, and the mandatory wearing of a safety visibility vest so that headlights of cars can see you. Now, I understand why these are laws, especially for workers who use bicycles, because I'm sure there's a lot of fatalities out there. 
a lot of fatalities. And so these laws are aimed at decreasing the fatalities of bicyclists that want to work and go home to their families and stay alive. So even if it's not a fatality, even if it's just a brutal injury, the less the better. And so that concludes our lecturings and learnings and lessons of the day and cool riding. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm about to sign off in a moment as I am going to that Best Buy over there on 86th Street and Lexington Avenue. Yes, I have another item to pick up. Sometimes when it's high crunch times, shopping season, some items are available at some Best Buys and not others. And sometimes having the item shipped is like a week longer than picking up the item yourself. And guess what I love to do? Ride my wheel. So when I see an opportunity to pick up an item a few blocks away or something like that, I am all in. I am on board. Okay, I'm here. Thanks for watching, folks. Thanks also, excuse me, pardon. Um, thanks for watching, liking, subscribing, commenting, sharing, and telling all your friends in person about all of this. Bye-bye. Hello.